Welcome to Faith Revival Holiness Synagogue Church and Parish. I'm your host, Minister and Prophet M.G. Mays. Let us begin in prayer, Father. Thank you, Father, for your holiness and redemption power be upon us right now. I thank you, Father, for the matrix of people's minds and hearts, that the, the, the blinders, the, the walls that, that, that Yeshua, you showed forth, that you would break down through the, 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 the skinning of the, the, the holy place. You want us there in the holy place, worshiping the holy of holies, which is Yah, our Father. And we thank you, Father. That, and we must have the Ark of the Covenant in our hearts, in our minds, which is you, Yeshua. You're the presence of the Ark of the Covenant itself. Amen. We must have that in our hearts and minds. And all the matrix of the, the walls and the blinders in people's lives may be broken this day. May they be set free. May all their religious stinking thinking in their churches and synagogues and perishing in the religious worldly stinking thinking of the world be broken. And may they all come to the cross of Calvary and be all saved today. We thank you and praise you. Amen. Today's uh, teaching is called um, Yermaihu uh, Tesheva, Repentance, Tesheva, Repentance. Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 34, 1 through 22, and 35 of 1 through 19. That's where we're headed. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from Yah when Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babel, his whole army and his uh, vestment of the kingdom and all the people fought against Jerusalem and all uh, its cities. And Yah, the God of Israel, says to go and speak. Go and speak to uh, Tezizkia, the king of Judah. Tell him that Yah says, I am going to hand this city over to the king of Babel. And he will burn it to the ground. You will not escape what will surely be captured and handed over to him. Your eyes will see the, the eyes of the king of Babel. And he will speak with face to face. And you will go to Babel. Nevertheless, Tezakiah, king of Judah, hear the word of Yah. Yah says, nevertheless, says this about you. You will not be put to the sword, but you will die peacefully and uh, and be put as a burnt spice of your ancestor. Early kings who pr produced you so that they will burn uh, uh, spices for you and mourn. O master, for I have spoken uh, the king of Judah and Jerusalem, as the time when the king of Babel army was fighting against Jerusalem and against the cities of Judah were left. That is af af after uh, uh, Lishkish and uh, Aska, since only those remaining of the fortresses cities of U Judah. This is, this is the word that came to Jeremiah. From the Yah, after the king of uh, Tezuka Yah had made his covenant with all the people of Judah, Jerusalem, to embase them. And everyone who had a male or female employee who was Hebrew was to let him go free. None was to keep his employees and fellow Jews, and all the leaders that all the people listening who had entered the covenant within, and everyone who was free, his male and female employees, none kept them in bondage any longer. And listen, and they let them go. But afterwards, they changed their mind and made them male and female employees whom they had freed and returned 
them and brought them back to subject as employees. Therefore, the word of Yah came to Yeremiah from Yah. Here is what Yah, the God of Israel, says. When I brought your ancestors out of the land of Egypt, and when they lived as, as slaves, I made his, this covenant with them. And at the end of the seven years, every one of you is to set his brother Hebrews, who have been sold to you and have served you six years, you are to let him go free from you. But your ancestors did not listen to me or pay attention. Now you, you now you repent. You did not did what is right from the viewpoint when each of you proclaimed freedom to his fellow and made a covenant before me in the house bearing my name. But then you changed your mind. You profaned my name when each of you took back his male female employees whom you have set free to live as they wish and brought them not heed me and proclaim freedom each to his brother and each to his name his neighbors so now i proclaim for you freedom now i proclaim for you freedom says yeah for the sword the plague the famines who violate my covenant by not living up to the conditions of my covenant which the the leaders of Judah and the leaders of Jerusalem and the officers of the Kohim and the Kohims and all the people of the land who pass between parts of of the calf I will hand them over to their enemies Hand them over to those who seek their lives and their corpse, and because their food of the birds of the air and the wild animals. And at Tezuthiah, king of Judah, and all the officers, and I will hand over the, them to their enemies and to those who seek their lives and the armies of the king of Babel, which has withdrawn. I will give the order, says Yah. And cause them to return to the city and they will attack it and capture it and burn it to the ground. And I will make the city of Yuda uh, desolate and unhappable. This is the word that Yah uh, came to Yeremiah uh, from Yah during the time of Yachim, Yo Yachim, the son of uh, uh, Yah, uh, Yahum. The king of Judah. Go to um, Yahim and speak to him. Bring them to one of the rooms in the house of Yah and give them some wine and drink to drink. So I looked and Yah Zayah, the son of Yah, the son of Yeremiah, who it looks like he has a son. Jeremiah has a son, says right here. And the son of uh, Havazinya, the brother of all his sons and all of uh, Yah, Yah and they took them into the house of Yah, to the, the rooms of his sons of uh, Hami, the son of Gagdal Yahu, the man, the man of God. It was by the room of the officers, which was above the room of Manasseh, the son of Shamim, the gatekeeper. Therefore, I sat front of the members of the clans of uh, Rechami, Rick, the, the pitchers full of wine, and cups and said to them drink some wine put put they say and we will not drink any wine because of uh young Kadev, the son of uh Rikva. our ancestors gave us 
this order, you are not to drink wine, neither you or your descendants forever. Also, you are not to build a uh, house, uh, sow seeds, or plant or own vineyards. Rather, you are also, you are uh, uh, always to live in tents so that you may live a long life in the land in which you and your are not citizens. We have heed the word of Yaudavan, the son of uh, Yaqfa, our ancestors, and all that uh, we instructed us to do, not to drink wine or as long as we live, and we we and our wives, our sons, and our daughters, not to build homes for ourselves to live in, not to have vineyards or fields or, or seeds. We are living in tents, and we have heeded uh, uh, Yav, our ancestor, and done everything we ordered us to do. But when, but when uh, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babel, came to attack the land, and we said, come, let us go up to Jerusalem, because we were afraid of the army of the Kishtums, and the, the army, the army of Aram. Hence, we live in Jerusalem. And the word of Yah came to Jeremiah. Yatazat, the God of Israel, says to go to the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and say, Won't you ever learn or listen to my words, says Yah? The words of, of uh, Yah Kadav, the son of uh, Yahva, which he ordered his offspring not to drink wine or, or to obey. So to this day, they don't drink any because of they heed to their ancestors' orders. But I have spoken to you, spoken frequently. You have not listened to me, says Yah. I have also sent you all my servants and prophets and sent them frequently, which but the message, every one of you should turn back now from your evil ways and prove your actions and, and not follow other false gods in order to, to serving them. No. And then you will live in the land I have given your ancestors, but you have not paid attention to and listened to me because, because of the descendants of of. Uh, Yonk of Dov, the son of Rikva, and the uh, ob obedience of the order of their ancestors, which he ordered them. But this people has not listened to me. Therefore, here is what Yah El Elyon Tezat, the God of Israel, says I will effect uh, on Judah. And all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, all the dis and, uh, disaster, and I decree against them, because I have spoken to them, but they have not listened. See, all of your traditions that you think are right, but God has been speaking to you all along about the right things of God's where you don't listen. So let it be known today to listen and not listen to all your traditions are worthless in your church and synagogue and parish and go by the traditions of the word again of God and not say so like you do and listen to what the Father God is saying through his spirit Yeshua to you that you don't listen to anymore because you you love your traditions all of you and this is why you are so foolish and so many foolish things are happening to all on the earth because you're foolish. You don't listen to Father God's voice crying out to the wilderness, prepare the way and get right with God and get right with his spirit and be spirit filled, full of his spirit. The first part is being born again, but the second part is being spirit filled with Yeshua, 
which many of you have not taught. Woe unto you ministers and leaders that have not said these things to your congregations and your people that you serve. Un and it says, then the clan of uh, uh, Rechavim, uh, Jeremiah says, here is what Yah Tezat, the God of Israel says, because you have heeded the order of uh, young Adav, your ancestor, obeying all his commands and done what he ordered you to do. Therefore, Yah Tezat, the God of Israel, says this, uh, Yoke Adav, the son of uh, Reva, will never lack the sentence to stand before me. So there you go. It's a time of repentance. This year of 2022 is a year of repentance. And either, either you're going to allow the matrix of your mind that, that, that was put in your mind and, and get rid of it. Allow God to, to get rid of the veil. A lot of people call it matrix, but it's a veil. It's a little veil. It's over the church's eyes and the synagogue's eyes and the parish's eyes and the world. This is what you all have in common. You have veils of your eyes and hearts. Today they call it matrix with this a veil. And that's what it is. And it keeps you from understanding the truth and only what the few want you to know. And Satan is the top one of that. And his day of fooling humanity is done because I stand against them. The heavens stand against, and Yeshua Himself stands against all these things. And there's a veil that's been put on the churches and synagogue and the parish and the world. Everybody has a veil to keep them from going and becoming the greatest them that God says you can be. And if God says it, you need to go by the promise that God has promised you from that young child growing up to becoming a man, a woman of today. You have lost that understanding. God has not made junk. Every last one of you have beauty and wonders that can do great things. And the few that are on the top to work for Baal, Satan, the false lord of this world, as you bought that and you allow that to be in you and now the only one that can take it away is the one that died on the cross for you but you don't depend on him like you think you do because if you did you would you would be further along of understanding how to to deal and pray for those that are out here and you don't you, you play games with God. Your churches play games with God. You play games with God, parishes and synagogues. You play games with God, world. You're all in the same boat. Whether you're non-religious or religious, it doesn't matter. That's the problem. The non-religious and religious are the problem. Both are the problem. Because that you put a veil of what that is in your life. Instead of checking it out in God's word, really, and wash yourself clean, your mind and heart clean from those things, and follow the spirit of God instead of the spirit of men and women that all we do. This is why God sends his prophets and emissaries and angels to proclaim the word, to get right with God's word, and get right. Your ministers and leaderships are falling apart because you are not right with the Father God. And the, you, you've been told time and time, but you won't listen. God's still small voice is trying to get a hold of many of your ministers, many of your leaders, but you fall short of God's glory every time and you do it your way. And you, you, you condemn all the ones that, are, that are, you're supposed to help. And this is not going to stand no more. The matrix of people's minds and heart will be broken. Those veils are the correct word. But today, language, they call it that. 
but it, all it is is a veil that keeps you from knowing the truth. And, and only so much of the truth. When God wants you to know the whole thing, he wants to know you and love you personally. And he wants to be with you. His spirit wants to guide you throughout life. And all this garbage that goes on, it's nonsense. Throw it in, in the deeps of hell and let it burn up all of it. Burn it all up. It's nonsense. The non-religious stuff and the religious stuff alike, burn the, it all up in the hell where it belongs and get your guidance from the Spirit of God himself and through the Word of God. And you, you learn how to live your life through the pages of the Word of God. Not religious mindsets of what men and women come up with or non-religious men and women come up with. It's the heartbeat of, of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, and the Father God. And may all the blinders and all the veils in your lives be broken this day, I pray, Father. And many of you need to get born again and therefore saved. And sanctification is yours in the relationship, the fullness of being family with God is yours. Pray this prayer. Dear, dear Father Yah, we love you. Thank you for being King, Savior, and Father over me. Thank you, Father, for your spirit that came in the flesh over 2,000 years ago. El Shaddai, it became as Yah, salvation, Yeshua, for us. And he is continuously is, and he always will be El Shaddai, the, the, the mighty great one of you, O God, the Father. We thank you and praise you. Amen. You are born again by believing, trusting, and knowing, and taking a hold of that grace today by confession and going forth in faith now. Remember all the good gifts come from a, a mighty God, the Father above. Do you lack the gift? You lack something in your life? Ask for it. He wants, he's a good father, and he, there's nothing that he won't give you if you ask for it. If you lack faith, ask for it. You lack wisdom on how to handle things at work because it's something new you have never done. Ask wisdom from the Father, and he'll show you how to run that machine, how to, how to go forth and, and do that new thing you've never done. You know, and there's a there's a lot of wisdom that God has to give to people if they ask for it and faith and healing. And yes, there's desires in your heart that he wants to fulfill, too. But you have to allow the spirit of God, the spirit of Yeshua to guide you into that destiny that God has proclaimed from the beginning of time for you. At this point particular time at that particular moment when it's right for you but in between time you got to learn you got to grow you got to there's things of, of victory to get to that moment in time and once you reach it then you'll know fully how to operate it and but yet still there's a lot of things you won't know because that's unknown is where you have faith in the Spirit of God, Yeshua, that he's going to get you to where you need to be. And to bless others, to be that you, that only you can be, amen, for whoever is needing it at the time, amen. God bless you. May all the walls and veils fall from everybody. And may they seek a relationship now, friendship and devotion of sanctification, of Yah, Yah's salvation, Yeshua, today. Knowing the will, you know the ways. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? God bless you. So it's a time of repentance, but it's a time of gathering away from veils that has kept you from really being the real you. And, and most people are fake them. It's time, it, the fake them has to go away and the real them has to come forth. The raw, sensual them in the inside out. And God is going to develop that and make you that beautiful man or woman that 
God always said you could be. Amen. And that fake you, that veil, has to go. And a lot of people are their fake them. I'm sorry to say that, but the veil has made you a fake you instead of allowed you not to be the real you that God says you can be. It's, a, it's basically the veil, the matrix has made you into a literally a copy of shadow of what you could be. And a fake in all that way is fake. When God has called you to, and, and called and broken the walls of Jericho around your life, amen, and put the walls of Nehemiah protection there that is not a veil, but it's just to protect you from future veils hurting you and, and stealing you back into the fake you instead of you being the real you that God has called you to be. That real lion cub, that tiger cub, that bear cub that knows who they are and they grow up to be that, that wonderful, majestic beast that does great things. You know what I'm saying? Good things, not bad things. Amen. Because when when a when a lion cub grows up and becomes a lion itself, it doesn't have self defeat, does it? it? It knows it's a lion. Just like a bear cub, when a bear cub grows into be a female or male bear alike, they they they're confident when they go fishing, they're gonna get something. They're going to swat at that fish and they're going to get it and they're going to accomplish their goal for their next generation that they're raising, more likely. Other, you know, whatever it is. Amen. God bless. Let's end with the Shalom prayer. But before we do, our Father, I pray of all the people that are really, really coming out of this veil that is it destroyed people's lives and that the veil is lifting the matrix veil is lifting off their minds and hearts and whether non-religious or religious like throw it all garbage away all that veil and get the relationship and get right with god and i thank you father that those veils are being torn down and they're going to go as prophesied when he was on that cross that was a prophecy when that veil ripped because we're supposed to go in that holy place and worship the holy of holies, which is the Father God with the Spirit of God, the ark coming in us now. And confidence that God has made us great people, each one of us, to do great things and blessings to one another and blessings to the Father God. And, and we thank you, Father, and I bless them out in their new journey that you have on them. That it's not it's, it's an ancient journey, but it's new to them. It's a good journey to, to become exactly what God has called them to do. The Creator has called you, uh, made you a, 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 a being, and, and then put you in your mother's womb. Before there was anything seen, you had a spirit and you had a soul. And then the, then the creator allowed there to be a physical body around what you did not see. That, and every good mother, and sometimes fathers that are really extra sensitive and drive their wives silly, but, but every good mother knows that there is something in you. Even though you don't see it, and you've gone to the doctor, say, "Well, because there is something there. It's just not. It's not the visible part that you see." Amen. But it will be, and you you need to pray over your wound and thank God for your wound and say, "Thank you, Father, for what what you have given me. That spirit, that little spirit, that little soul that's in me right now, and it's about ready to grow into flesh of this world." That beautiful baby that is not seen, but it's there. Life be is before you see it. And then, then, then the evidence that it's already been there is the flesh growing. Amen. So God creates a spirit and soul for every man, woman, and child. When, they, when they're in the mother's womb, you don't see it. It's there. But a good mother and 
an extra sensitive father, they know that, that that's what's going on in there. Amen. Even if they went to the doctor again and the doctor said, I don't see anything, it's because they only see what they can, what is there, but the evidence when it's there. But the evidence is already there, but the physical evidence is not shown yet. Amen. These little souls, soul, souls with the spirit that are around the throne. They're given a chance to prove their, that they're they're loyal, and then they give the journey that God gives you on this earth to prove that you're loyal, and then and and to also approve of you and make you that great you through the trials, the good times, and all these other things to to make that character. And if you allow the Spirit of God to be with you in this journey. Then you, at the end of the journey, you go into that, that the rewards for for being faithful, for learning the different things, for being that blessing when you needed to be, and all the loving correction, all the different things. And you're led by the Spirit of God and the Word of God together. And at the end of the journey, you get the reward for it. And to you, the greater you that God has already saw you as from the beginning. When you were just a little little soul, a little spirit that was given into the mother's womb. Amen. God bless you. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Holiness that brings peace to pass is all understanding. None that's ever none broken. Complete peace of the living God and the spirit of God, Yeshua, Yah, salvation be with you forevermore. Every, every child in the womb matters. And it deserves life and not death. And those that want to kill it, they deserve everything they're going to get from the Father. Because it's life that you're killing. And you cannot go around the fact you're killing life. And the first thing of our Constitution in America is the pursuit of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And you're taking that right away from that living being that God created in your womb. And therefore, you're guilty as charged of things of heavenly guilty as well as earthly things of guiltiness. But I tell you what, the forgiveness of God is great. And those that have done this error, this really evil error, this murderous things, can be forgiven, but your memory of it will stay with you because it's so horrendous what you've done. You, you've you destroyed a life that has not done nothing wrong. They're not even given a chance to see what it can do and how it can, it can actually be a hero or heroine that could do great things. And you took, you stole that from this world. And that, that, that very thing, it could have been that, that little child could have been that child growing up that could have invented something that we all needed. Or it could have been something, a, a, a lady that grows up to be something great that we all need. We won't never know now because you took that, you killed that life away. And that same thing goes for elderly people. When you kill the elderly, when you shun them, you spit on their face literally like a lot of the states are doing. You are putting a curse on your state, your governors, when you do that. And you must repent because elderly people have lived a life long. And they have many things that they can, they can give us and understand of things that we've forgotten. That we need to remember that they have. So we need to start listening to these elderly people that are in their uh late 70s, 80s, 90s, and even if they make it the hundreds, we got to start listening to some of the things that we might have forgotten that they might know that might help us right now. That's why if you find an ancient book and it looks like a good condition, you want to hold that with everything in your heart. Because I tell you, but uh, books that from for a long time ago 
have lots of knowledge that we need to know today, period. When they're good things, yeah, there might be some literature out there that might not be good uh, with socialist tendencies that are not good. But I'm talking about the good books out there. If you find one, you, you hold on to it. Amen. God bless you. Now, let's all repent. We all have something to repent about. And the good thing is we can go to the spiritual confession booth where Yeshua is, and we can get it all off your chest, off your mind, and allow him to come over to the other side and love on us and help us. Say, now you walk like a champion when you come out of here, you know. But before I even get out the door, the spiritual confession booth, the Father God's calling us up. And I just, I just want to give you a big hug and encourage you that you can be that man or woman that I've called you to be. Amen. And you go forward and you feel really great and good. And that's the way it should be. God bless you. Shalom to you. I love you. Now, this be good. Stop this segregation garbage and, and all this garbage that we do today. And let's love one another, not in a fake way, but in an eternal way of like the Spirit of God showed us when he came in the earth suit, Yeshua. Amen. And when you lack something, we ask of the Father, right? So if you lack love, you ask for it. You lack wisdom, ask for it. Faith, what? I don't care what it is. Ask for it today, okay? Okay, and, 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 and the Father will be happy to give it to you when it's time. Maybe it's time now. Maybe it's time a couple hours from now. Who knows? That's his call. It's not ours, is it? We're just supposed to ask and receive it by, by faith, even if it's a little bit of faith doesn't matter to God. You, you just, you going forth in something instead of nothing at all. Even if it's just a little faith, a little step in the right direction, that is something great to God, the Father. He wants to see you grow. Even if it's a tiny bit, it's better than nothing at all, right? God bless you.